introduction, I'm trying another type of video here. I'm going to stick with the longer and shorter format tutorials. We're also going to have the plain air videos. In this video, I just wanted to share with you an answer to an email um, that I gave recently. I obviously get a lot of emails, a lot of questions about watercolour. Um, and I really like to try and reply to people as best I can. This was a student of mine from a recent course, and I just felt that the answer could be useful to other people, so I wanted to share it with you. What I'm going to do is play uh, a recent painting, um, kind of chopped up or time-lapsed, and then I'm just going to narrate over the top with my answer to this question. And it's a really great question. It's about um, how do you know if you're improving? And also with this, what are some little tips to help you improve with watercolour in the direction that you want to go. Like I said, loads more of the usual videos to come and going to be planned, um, but this is just something a little bit different that I thought I'd try. So the question was, how do I know if I'm improving or not? Do you think I should write down my goals before painting, then paint, and finally review afterwards, and perhaps let it sit for a day and then take another look at it? So I thought this was a great question. Um, and funnily enough, it's not really something I've thought about before in the sense that answering the question, how do I know if I'm improving or not? Because in some ways it's, it, it's quite an obvious question because you just say, well, I feel like I'm improving and my work looks better, but actually there's a lot more to it to that, which makes it such a great question. So I think the first thing is actually more than anything else, and even more than your end results, is are you feeling more confident with the brush and with the paint, with the watercolours? Because so much of painting is actually down to confidence. And this confidence comes with knowledge of your materials and the basic kind of foundational principles of tone and shape and composition, colour and edges. But most importantly, it's actually just experience, which is, of course, just time with the brush in your hand. Then secondly, are you happier with your results? Again, it sounds obvious, but if you are not getting closer to what it is that you're chasing as an artist, at least over a period of time, because we all have kind of funny down periods in our painting or times when we, we get frustrated. But on the whole, over a period of time, are you getting closer to what it is that you're trying to achieve? Whatever your current level, then yes, you would say that you are improving. But it's a tricky one because even if you are not getting closer or you feel, and it can be quite hard because our emotions come in, you may feel like you're not getting closer to what it is that you're chasing. More often than not, simply painting and spending time with a brush in your hand is over a period of time going to make you a better painter. But so, OK, so from a more practical or useful point of view, some usable advice um, I would consider lining up, if you can, all of your paintings in time order and ask yourself, can you see any noticeable changes? And what are these changes? Are they changes that show a progression, say, of the four principles I mentioned a minute ago? Or beyond that, are they just simply changes in the direction that you want to go with your work? So when we first start out on anything. Um, the learning curve can be really steep with what can often at times actually feel like very fast improvement, even if we're slightly overwhelmed by everything. We do see often quite fast improvement. And then as we gain a little bit more experience, this inevitably kind of levels out and we seem to have to work much harder and it takes much longer to see even a little bit of noticeable improvement. And this can be frustrating at times and disheartening. But this is all just kind of the learning curves, the peaks and the troughs, the plateaus of learning everything. It's all very normal. I suppose the only difference is that with time and experience of someone who's been painting longer, we have simply come to learn that these come and go and we worry about these far less. I'm not saying we don't worry about them at all, but we worry about them less. We know it's just part of painting. And we know that will be plenty of times in the not too distant future if we just keep painting 
where things do start to click again. There are light bulb moments, um, steps or even noticeable jumps forward in our work and our confidence. So really, we just have to keep painting and spending time with the brush in the hand. Although I will add that, yes, time with brush in hand and painting is obviously the key. I also believe there are certain areas that we need to focus on and things which need to be learnt to get us improving faster and in the direction we want to go. So therefore, we, we're kind of avoiding potentially years even of frustration by focusing on the wrong things. We need to learn what areas to focus on. Um, I like to put it, we're learning the correct ways to improve your painting and it's really important. And I cover this kind of route and these principles extensively in the Watercolour Masterclass series. Um, and you can find more info on the links below. So I'm just doing a little plug there while well, I've got a moment and it's in my head. Uh, and in fact, the, the upcoming online watercolour school, which is launching um, any moment now, early September 22, this will also be a really great place to get to grips with what we need to learn to improve our watercolour painting. So the link's in the descriptions to that. Okay, so yes, it can be hard to see improvement. Or rather, often we see improvement maybe in one area, but another area we thought we were strong in suddenly feels weaker. Even feels like we might be staping, taking a step back. And this is totally normal. So I think the last part of the puzzle is learning to analyse and critique your own work. Teachers and guides and mentors and other artists are really important, obviously, but learning to analyse your own work and taking the time to do so will really help you progress quickly. So we often tend to judge our own paintings from an emotional and a subjective point of view, which has its place, obviously. Um, but we can get caught up in the frustration of things not turning out as we want them to. Maybe we get annoyed that we don't like our own work. And also, most of all, not really knowing what we're actually doing wrong or where to focus our attention moving forward. So not only thinking as to whether you like it or not, but also learning to be more objective when looking at and analysing your work is important. So we're using our knowledge of the key principles to make up that make up a painting um, and that can be one, one really great way of doing it whatever your current level it doesn't matter if you're just starting you've been painting for decades using the knowledge of the key principles to analyze your work objectively um, is a way that I found really works for me so the next four points are what I call the primary principles of painting as I said this is the first course in the original masterclass series and they're the same areas we need to look at when we're analysing any painting, so whether we're looking at our own. But it's actually a great framework from which to analyse any other artist's work too, uh, one we want to learn from it, and then bring what we've learned into our next painting and evolve our work um, in this sort of a way. So these aren't the only things to think about, of course. There's obviously the use of the medium, techniques, colour mixing, all that stuff. But in terms of analysing the end result, these are, I think, great foundational points. So swinging back to the question on improvement and back to this idea of laying out our work over a period of time to really sit down and take a look at it um, and look at the differences between our past and current work, hopefully we would see improvements in tonal values being number one. Are our tonal values clearer and more simple in our current work? Is there a nice separation of light and shadow values or shadow tones? Secondly, we've got composition and shapes. Are you linking shapes and washes together? Are you creating strong patterns of light and shadow? Are you creating pleasing compositions to your eye? Um, and are you thinking about painting shapes rather than painting things? Third is colour. A um, lot more about colour is we can go into, but very simply, are you feeling more confident with your colour mixing? Are your colours sitting well together in a painting? Do you like the colours you are using? And without overthinking it, do you like the way that your colours feel? And then very finally, we have edges, which for me is the fourth but kind of important principle. Do you have a variety of edges? Are some of your edges hard and defined and are some softer and fuzzier uh, and maybe hopefully some are even completely lost. 
So whatever level you're at and you ever get to, these are four key areas to always be looking at, always and forever. So that's a fairly brief overview, um, not too extensive about any area, but there are some good points to stimulate the sort of questions you should be asking about your paintings. And then learning to look at these principles and regularly analysing these in your own work will help you understand where it is that you're getting stuck and it will also give you the keys to move forward beyond that. So if you answered no to any of the above questions, that's fine, but it will give you some clues as to what areas you need to focus on with your painting. And don't be afraid to pick one area and focus on that for a good few paintings or at least studies. So say you want to create more soft edges, um, try to keep an eye on the others, the tone, composition, colour, etc. But really focus your attention on creating more soft edges in your next painting or next series of painting. And then you can kind of bank that and move on to something else. And then beyond that, of course, we have what I call the essential elements, which are more to do with the physicality of the paint. So that would be colour mixing paint consistency and also how we are using the paint. So we'll know whilst we're painting where we're struggling with these and then we can study them more closely and focus on these elements of the watercolour specifically. And then when analysing our work we may also be able to see where we went a bit heavy with the paint, maybe we did too many layers or we overworked the paint, all of these elements of the physical nature of watercolour. So these are our course, or of course considerations on top of the primary principles. So always remember that learning is not a straight line at all. In some ways it's actually um, cyclical, cyclical, uh, <laughs> works in cycles is what I mean. Um, so we learn a thing to a certain level and we implement it for a while. We then come to truly understand it to a certain level but then we eventually consider or go back to that same or similar bit of initial information that we saw or heard or we, we were taught and we see it again with a, a deeper level of understanding. So, for example, I've been painting regularly for 15 years now, but I always find myself coming back to the four principles I mentioned above. Hence why I call them the primary principles. Yes, we explore, we have fun, we get creative, we try new things, we go in different directions, try different subjects. But whatever subject, whatever style we work in at any time, even fully abstract, abstract, um, it's these primary principles that underpin everything and that we keep coming back to time and time again. And every time I revisit them, I do understand them in a slightly deeper way and then I implement this in my work in a slightly deeper way. So after all of that, <laughs> I would say yes, absolutely, write down your goals before you paint. Leave yourself open for ideas developing and being creative, but certainly take some time to consider what it is that you love about the subject, it's a great idea, what it is you are trying to achieve, what is going to be your main focus in this painting and keep it very, very simple. Yeah, I would definitely recommend review it a day or so later, not immediately necessarily because um, we might be too emotionally caught up in how it went or how we like it and that changes. Um, whereas judging things more objectively does not change over time. And then what we do is we take what we've learned from reviewing and analysing our own work objectively and we take this into our next painting with it at the forefront of our minds. So very finally, I do think learning to describe and talk about your painting is only a good thing, even if it's just with yourself. I'm a big believer in developing a language to describe your painting and your processes and ways of tackling your subject because I've seen so many times that developing your own language that makes sense to you makes huge differences in the way you work. This takes time of course and experience but it's a good thing to think about because the language you use with yourself and with your painting is massively important. It's one of the key underlying things that I actually often teach. What language to use to get you thinking about your subject and your painting in the right way and also in a fun and positive way because it makes all the difference. Um, the language we use about painting is a large part of what I teach in the Watercolour Masterclass and also the online school too. 
There we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. There's going to be loads more, as I said, of the usual videos to come. This is just something a little bit different I thought I'd try. Please do consider subscribing. Hit the bell to be the first to be notified. All of that stuff. You can find links to me in the description. Uh, I've got the online watercolour school, the online watercolour masterclass, and some upcoming Zoom demonstrations, plus all the other places you can find me online. Until next time, guys, happy painting, happy living, and I will see you soon.